So I'm assuming we've all played zombie games, right? And maybe it's the it's the first person game where there's zombies in every square inch you go, but apparently you have superpowers, so it doesn't really matter. Or maybe or maybe you're playing the game where you play with your friends with waves of zombies and everything is chaotic, but you aren't really immersed or scared because you're playing with people that don't take the game seriously anyway. I can't fucking see. That's okay. Oh. Dead Rising 2? This one is really good. Very creative with the weapons, unfortunately. I've played so much of it when I was younger that I'm only playing for nostalgic Jesus purposes Christ. now. Uh, what am I doing here? Seven Days to Die? Oh. Decent. Again, first-person shooter, though. Can we please have something a little bit different in here? There we go! But is it immersive? No. Unless you truly want to believe you're a stationary cartoon plant that shoots peas, I don't think you're getting anything out of it. Here's an immersive game, though. Land of Zombies. Have you guys heard of this game before? Headshot! You know what? There's probably a reason why you haven't. Okay, that actually scared me. Holy shit. <clears throat> okay, before anyone says anything, I would like to say... None of these games that I listed are bad, okay? They aren't. But what am I getting at here? What, Angel? Some of them are first-person shooters, so you don't like them, or what? You don't find Plants vs. Zombies immersive? Oh, wow, who would have guessed? Yeah, I know. I'm just saying, I feel personally like there's no good mix, right? A lot of the zombie genre seems to fit between two categories. The arcade... ...and the downright terrifying. So, is there a game out there that can give me a good mix? What, what am I looking for when it comes to the zombie genre? You know, one that seemingly gives you a lot of things. The game has to be fun, it has to be terrifying, and it has to be at least a little bit realistic. You can't be a genetic freak that can withstand anything. And it also has to be multiplayer. If I were to sum up Project Zomboid in a sentence, I would say that it is the outlier of the zombie genre. Now, to a lot of people that know this game, you're probably nodding your head right now in agreement, going, yes, please, feed me the approval for this game. I need to hear it more. I need to hear all of the good things. For the person that doesn't know what this game is, no, you're probably not saying that. You're probably saying to yourself, what? You're gonna tell me that this pixelated, empty, top-down arcade-like, ugly, NVIDIA GTX 480 graphics-intensive game is going to compete with these titles. This game isn't the outlier, dude. It's the outcast. What the f- Well, if you're gonna put it that way, I don't know. That's kind of making me insecure about my point. Sure, it might not look appealing to an outside eye at first glance, and yeah, it might look like something you'd see in the deep corner of an arcade, but I like it. I actually like it a lot. And a lot of other people think so as well. You can't deny that. Do I play enough zombie games to justify that this game is better than the games that I mentioned? No, absolutely not. I'm not the connoisseur of this genre. The only zombie game that I've put more than 20 hours in is in... <laughs> but then again, you can't even compare this game to essentially any well-known zombie game out there. Because you see, Project Zomboid is kind of in its own separate category. It's an isometric simulator game. Go ahead and tell me what that means. I bet you don't. I had to look up what that meant on Google. It's essentially kind of a top-down, but instead of looking like this, it looks like this to give off a 3D effect. Isometric zombie games. Fuck, never mind, there's more games like these. But don't tell me you've heard of How to Survive, or yet another zombie game HD, because you most likely probably haven't. And if you have, I'm sorry that you wasted your time. We don't count these. And now, you can take a look at what game is left. All alone. Like you. A game where you are plopped into a starting area. Afraid. With no recollection of the past, you might say, Where are my kids? Where's my wife? Gone. You never had any. And who are you, you might ask as well? Well, that's for you to decide. That's the one thing that you do pick. No resume needed here. If you're still in med school, you can jump right in as a doctor. Fuck school. You can be a fitness instructor, a repairman, a burglar. That's, that's not a job. You want to be a lumberjack? Oh boy. Looks like you'll have plenty of strength from chopping down those trees. But be careful now. Every job comes with their disadvantages now, don't they? The more time you put into your craft, what? the worse you'll be with other things. Oh, wait, that makes sense now. I can't just have positive traits. I gotta have some negative ones too. Now, fortunately for you, none of this matters anyways, because if you're playing for the first time, you won't know when to be careful. So you're going to walk around like a crazy person making lots of noise. And unbeknownst to you, Zombies will start heading your way to break your windows all while you, clueless, oh, shit. have the menu open frantically trying to figure out how to put stuff in your inventory. Please get away from me. Oh, okay, I'm stun locked. I literally can't move. They've stun- I can't do anything. I'm so fucked. Climb over the table. Nope. Okay, so this is what happens when you walk outside for three seconds. I think it's over. How do I restart? Oh.
I'm actually a really big fan of video games that offer little to no tutorial. You can have a fresh install of Minecraft and you're kind of off to explore its world by yourself with really no guidance and nobody to hold your hand. Project Zomboid offers a tutorial on how mechanics work. They show you just enough to be able to function, they show you how to move around and interact, and then they kind of just throw you into the water with no life jacket. Everything else, all the debuffs, all the different items, all the skills, coupled with the enormous map, go explore it all. Everything else you have to learn on your own. I can't open it. Maybe you try the other door. Oh. Now, is the tutorial helpful in terms of helping you survive? Depending on how you look at it, yes. They show you how to reload and shoot a gun as your first valuable lesson. Oh my god, I found a gun. Wow, my aim is perfect. Aren't I a police officer? Like that's Well, that was helpful. I might as well just been shooting blanks. A bubble gun. I'm done. Okay, before I die again, I want to share a message from our sponsor. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. With vehicles including tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships all battling it out in dynamic combat arms PvP. And it's not just a couple of vehicles that this game has, it's actually over 2,000 that you can choose from. Oh wow, that's a lot of vehicles. Do you need any extra equipment to drive the- Nope, no you don't. And if you have a mouse and keyboard, you can handle all of them using the intuitive mouse aim mode. And thank god, because I, I don't have anything else to use. Now don't you worry, friend, you won't miss out on any of this. If you don't have a PC, you can play on both Xbox and PlayStation as well. And it's all free. With every vehicle being wonderfully detailed and modeled down to even their individual components, it offers a highly immersive combat experience. Now, I'm a sucker for visuals, so not only does the game offer incredible graphics and details in 4K resolution, but it's also filled with authentic sound effects and beautiful music to fully encompass that atmosphere into a wonderfully immersive game. Also, none of this is one-dimensional, okay? What's actually really exciting to me about this game is that you can interact with other types of vehicles. It's not just air-to-air -air or ground-to-ground. -ground. You want to blow up tanks with your plane? Go ahead. You want to blow up planes with your tank? You can do that as well. And for a limited time only, new War Thunder players as well as players who haven't played in the last six months across all platforms can claim a large bonus pack by using my links down below. The pack includes multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, an exclusive 3D decorator for your vehicles, and much more. So don't waste any more time. You can play War Thunder right now for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox using my link in the description below or through my pinned comment. Thank you, War Thunder, for sponsoring today's video. All right. What were we talking about? Dying? Yeah, but evidently that's the point, right? The first thing that Spiffle tells you the first time you open the game is that you're going to die. The game is about dying. There's really no overarching story. The only story is really just the one that you make of yourself. Turn this TV off. There we go. I do warn you though. This game is very, very hard as a new player. This isn't Left for Dead. No, 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 no. There's nobody here to save you. Nobody. And when you die, you lose everything. Oh, greetings, everybody. Welcome in. Now, <clears throat> you might be saying to that. Well, fuck that. I don't want to lose all my shit. Well, hey, guess what, man? That's real life, bucko. This game has the simulation tag on it. And guess what? When you die in real life, you drop your inventory too, and you lose all your skills. So what do you want? You want my advice? Okay. Step one, you spawn in. Step two, you move around your house and close all of your windows. Step three, your instincts tell you to look for a weapon. Okay, hold on. Oh, hold on, wait, can I... Wait, can I equip this? Wait, bro, I have a pen. Step four, you realize very quickly that there's absolutely nothing in your home, so you walk outside. Step five, go and trip over bushes while attempting to find bro. another home to settle in. A bush, a bush crippled me, bro. Step six, forget the house, walk into the convenience store. It's closed, everything's closed. Oh my God, okay, I'm fucked. Oh my God, there we go. Step seven, please, I need like food or something. I'll drink this milk. All right, give me one second. Never mind. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I had 15 minutes on the game during this and 10 of those was building my character. But I do know now, and I'll actually legitimately help you this time, if you're a new player, you want to stay away from guns, at least in the beginning. It's not only loud, but if your aiming skills are at zero, you're going to shoot nothing. Okay, I didn't learn my lesson. I want you to sneak everywhere. Don't make any loud noises. Don't break a window. Fuck! Don't sprint. Speaking of sprinting, by the way, don't enable sprinters unless you like the World War Z movie and you want to die immediately. You don't want to go to Louisville either. The biggest city in the game with undoubtedly the highest population of zombies you'll ever see. God help you if you go there and even then he'll probably just abandon you. 
Jesus. But if you're somebody with a sense of adventure, somebody who has lots of courage, smart, someone who's smart, who, someone who can think on their feet, if you can handle dying over and over again, and if you're an ambitious person especially, maybe this game might be for you. I want to play Project mm. Zomboid with sprinters yes. and go to Louisville. With sprinters? What is sprinters? You don't know what sprinters are? Bro, I have not played the game. <laughs> Wait, you haven't played the game? Just keep uh, pushing! Uh, wh where do I push? Run, just run, just run, just run, just run, just run. Over the, over the hill. Yeah, just jump, just jump. Oh, go, go in this house, go in this okay. house. Find a weapon in the kitchen. Find, find a weapon in the kitchen. Do, 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 do. They know how to open doors. Oh my god, they know, they how, know how, to how to open doors. Door. Egg carton, can, tomato, tomato paste, uh, dog food. Do we need Go. dog food? Go, just uh, run. Wine, kitchen knife, kitchen knife, kitchen knife. Perfect. Ah, okay, inventory, how do I do that? Where did you go, northeast, southwest? Where did I go? Dude, watch me, watch me. How do I, okay, okay, yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> okay. Here we go again, we just keep pushing. There's a certain word that rarely ever gets tossed around in the gaming sphere. Despair. A word you don't really think about when it comes to the horror of the zombie genre. This game serves that to you on a platter and shoves it in your face for you to inhale. See, when you play a game, a game with a narrative, an overarching story, some find that even having a narrative is comforting in itself. Having a story, knowing that it exists, alleviates some of that disparity and fear. And when you strip that away, and when there's no NPCs for you to talk to, and when there's no narrator for you to listen to, and when everything feels so empty, nothing, just you and them, it gives you that sense of hopelessness, some of that uneasiness, left to your own devices. And please don't say, oh, Unturned doesn't have a narrative. No NPCs on Unturned. You feel some disparity and fear there, right? Okay, I'm not even going to say why that doesn't apply. But regardless, if you want to remove a little bit of that tension, playing with your friends definitely helps alleviate that. At least a little bit. Oh, oh, um. What? What's wrong? I might need help. Nah, you need your own, man. We need I have a bad driver. Die. My skills. I have a bad driver. <laughs> I can't. I'm driving super slow and there's so many zombies near me. I'm, okay, I'm getting out the truck. Fuck you. I'm, He's actually I'm fucking leaving. Fucking I, I abandoned the truck. I abandoned the truck and I'm coming back. I'm worried about the truck, man, not you. Yeah, I know. I understand that. You don't value my life, and that's okay. Where are you guys? The fuck? Dude, I'm gonna, gonna fucking die. Runner. Okay, I'm hiding in this fucking little shack. If you die, that is like totally on you. You left us, and then you fucking lost the truck. I am so pissed. Give me. <laughs> that's your own fault. Open the fucking door. Oh! Shh. Angel, just tell me where you are. I promise you, I won't lead them. <laughs> I don't. Dude, 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 he's so full of shit right now. <laughs> Fucking scared. Project Zomboid is probably one of the most realistic and most difficult games that I've played in a very, very long time. Not to say that that's a bad thing, because it isn't. There's not a lot of games out there that gives the level of detail and simulator-like aspects that Project Zomboid offers, while at the same time, not being so realistic that every single button on your keyboard is a function you can do in-game and being so fucking annoying with it. This game gives you the best of the bunch when it comes to realism. You aren't a superhuman. Your crush is not impressed by picking up two chairs, man. If you pick up too much stuff, your back turns to dust. Don't break glass with your hands, also. Be responsible and use gloves, please. You will cut yourself. Also, if you're gonna run in the heat, for the love of God, do not wear a jacket. You will be soaked, completely. But how do you mitigate that? Well, you can just take your clothes off. What's your backpack, though? What the fuck are you doing? You did a little off-camera mining. Uh, but you can dry yourself with towels, though, as well. And, but only if the towel is dry enough. You can also wring your clothing out with a mod as well. And speaking of mods... Alright, one second. One second, guys. Hold on, I'm doing something. And... Nah, I don't really like that. Oh my god. I should have worn pants. No, my letter opener. Fuck. There we go. And the details are still going. Just details upon details. So many quality of life mods that make the game even more realistic than it already is. There's a common sense mod that allows you to open doors with a crowbar now. You don't have a can opener to open your can of asparagus? Well, you can use the rusty and infected knife you found on the back of a zombie you killed not too long ago at the carrot shop. Also, if you get tired of playing the same music over and over again in the car, now there's a mod that allows you to play whatever music you want. Jesus, this took forever to set up. And it finally works. What are you Rolling. doing, man? Rolling. Fuck off! Hit him with the car! <laughs> Hit him with the car! Sorry, I'm going back. 
back because I should start. Alright, alright, I'll stop. I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop. We get him? <laughs> there is a slight problem with this game. It's great that you're able to roam around freely, do whatever you please, set up and build yourself a home wherever you go. The amount of items you can collect is insane, but once you do all of that, mind you, it doesn't take long once you get the hang of things. It can go stale rather quickly. All right. Now what? Once you kind of collect enough equipment for yourself and food and water isn't really an issue, zombies won't feel as threatening as they used to be when you first plopped into the world. Now you can say to that, well, isn't that to be expected from a game that has no story and nothing to finish? Like I said, the main point of the game is for you to survive as long as you can before you inevitably just die or just log off from the world forever. Minecraft is pretty similar. No story and nothing to finish. Even if you go kill the Ender Dragon, to most people, that isn't even considered the end of the game because once you kill it, you spawn right back into the world and now you can go off and build a giant city if you please. It kind of only just begins after that. You can't really do that here. Once you collect top tier stuff, you're essentially done. Do I have any suggestions on how to fix the issue? <laughs> no, I just play video games. But it's great, you know, it's a... Uh, it's a great game nonetheless. The moments you have of adrenaline are high, the deaths feel well deserved for my own stupidity, and the sense of danger wherever you go has you constantly aware and filled with anxiety. The adventure you have, going from a measly unemployed bum with a fork to an unemployed bum with guns and military gear, is actually really fun, especially when you have people to enjoy that experience with. Up until, of course, you reach a certain point where there's no turning back. And all of a sudden, in that moment, that sense of disparity, is yours to have once again. We go across the fence? Yes, we do. Fuck this. Yes, we do. Okay, I'm taking care of two. Careful, oh, shit. Bit bitten. Are you bit? Yeah, I'm bitten. Oh no. Is this over? It's over for you. Hey, they're coming. Oh shit. Holy shit, there's a lot. Dude, dude, are you going? Are you going for it? Help. Oh my god. Oh my god. Run! Run, Jen! Just run! <laughs> run. Holy Jen, shit, Jen, just run. Dude. Just run. Just run. Guys, if you want to be part of my future videos, uh, follow my Twitch. I'll be streaming very soon. Link's going to be down below. And thank you to the two patrons that have ever so gratefully followed me on there. I'll be uploading more consistently now. Thanks again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. You can play it right now for free and make sure to use my link in the description or the pinned comment to receive a large bonus pack, which includes boosters, fresh new vehicles, a premium account, and much more for a limited time only.